Hello and welcome to this Tech and Trains channel video and in this video I'll be showing you how to get started with Python and for this tutorial we'll be using Python 3.7.4 and we'll be using Idle 3. Right, so the first thing you generally do in the language when you first start it is you print hello world and in Python you use the print command the print command is like that and when you call a function you just do it like this so you have your command and then you have what to do so when you print you're printing what's in the speech marks so you're basically just printing what you literally put there so that's your basic print commands other commands which you will need to use the import command so this imports libraries so i'll just show you a quick way to do it so you can do import time the time library will allow you to have breaks in your code for example you can sleep for a second or something like that or you can just print what the time is so for example you go print time so you can call the time library like that and then we use dot notation you can do control space to bring up this dialog box and this shows you all the options we're going to print time dot c time then these brackets show i'm calling the functions this function requires no parameters because there's nothing in the brackets the print command does require a parameter it requires you what you printed but this doesn't require a command so we can go print time.c time it says saturday january 11th 1339 29 2020 so that's your time command and this is dot notation you can also import modules and libraries such as the OS library you can put in port whatever you want basically the emails for libraries you can have OS SMTP LIB that's the SMTP library allows you to send emails there's IMAP LIB that allows you to receive emails so there's a lot of libraries and you can install more off the Python website so I'll just show you how to, to use the OS library just basically and then use dot notation see what's in the library use control space see all the possible options scroll down to os dot system now on some computers this will allow you to have super user access so this basically allows you to access the terminal on any computer so i'll just go echo hello it doesn't bring up a terminal window it executes it in the background so that's executed it in the background for me it won't show up on the screen but if you say have something like play audio, that's when you'll notice it. Like other programming languages, Python has all the four variables. It has string, integer, floating decimal number, and Boolean. So the Boolean is probably the easiest to use. You can just go, um, what should we call it? Boo, actually let's call it boo variable var equals false boovar equals true so that's your two options for boolean variables they can either be set to true or false or zero and one depending on what you're doing when you use a string you're generally using text or phone numbers so i can just set um variable my string in python you do not need to declare any variables you could just declare it by signing it the first time so my string equals what should we call it tech and trains channel so that's that so that's how you use a string so when you use an integer you're setting it to a number that cannot be point something point something point something if you do do point something it will round it so for example i can do variable int i just shorten that's my integer name just go variable int equals 10 and variable int equals where int equals 10.1 but that will set it to a floating decimal number so if we want it to round to an int we just do ver int equals int ver, ver int 
Python is case sensitive, so we can now see what's in the variable by going print bare int. So as you can see, it's rounded 10.1. When we change it to an integer, it rounded it to 10. So we can print variables, just don't use the quotations. We can print my string. Let's take a string down and we can print boovar. So those are the variables printed. The other variable is a floating decimal number. So show you how to do that. So let's say float bar equals 10.345 print float bar. So there's our float variables. As mentioned previously, another feature of Python is conversion between variables. And we can see this when we change the float in decimal number via int which set 10.1 float decimal into an integer, we converted it. So these are all your uh, names for when you convert. So you've got float, string, ball, and integer. And if you want to convert between the two, for example, let me just show you. So let's create a, a new int variable. So we'll do variable int two equals four. We can convert that to a string by going var int two equals string or SDR, that's what it's shortened to, var int two. And that just converts the variable to a string. So we can now, for example, we can now just do that. When concatenating variables, which is basically, say you've got your name and a surname in two separate variables and you want them to be in this, you want to merge them into one variable they need to be the same variable type. For example, we couldn't merge your name and your birthday if your birthday was an integer and your name was a string. So the easiest way to do this is to convert the integer to a string using the above here. So what we can do is we can use our string from my string. We can create my string two equals string. So we're just making sure it goes into a string. We can put variable int two plus tech plus owner oh no, plus my string. So what we're doing is we're concatenating these two variables. Oops, yeah, concatenating those. So what should happen is we should get four tech and trains channel that set so let's just check what that's set to should be set to four tech and train channel yes it is so what we've done is we merged that which is variant two with this and that's the e easiest way of concatenation in python just to convert them into the same variable type and then concatenating and just beware you cannot use a plus symbol for integers because if you put plus for two integers it would add them together instead of concatenating them so to concatenate two integers you must first uh, convert them into strings when we concatenate two integers we need to convert them into strings first and I'll show you why so we have var int one equals one var int two equals two and then we'll have var int three as just do it normally. So we just do that. It's var int one plus var int two. So what we now have is we have var int three not set to the concatenation of one and two, which would be 12, but it's actually them added together. So if we want them to be the same, we need to convert them, I mean, to be 12, we need to convert them into strings. So var int one equals str. So I'm just typing them in to be converted. Right, so they are converted into strings, and we can do var int three equals var int one plus var int two. 
Now what it's done is because they're two strings, it's concatenated them. So you've got 1 plus 2 is 12. Whereas if we concatenated them as an integer, it would be 1 plus 2 equals 3. And that's the main difference when working with variables between strings and integers. As I mentioned earlier, strings are used for telephone numbers because of one simple reason. Let's just do telephone number. Let's just do a random telephone number. Zero. Yeah, good reasonable telephone number. It's probably not digits. I didn't count. So that's so we'll set the telephone number to that. Oh, invalid token. Yeah, so what it's actually done is, is it said you can't set an integer to something that starts with zero. Because if I did telephone number equals that should work. Yeah, so you can't set an integer to something with a zero on the front, which is why we use strings, because we can change strings or assign them to practically anything. So if we do tell equals and the quotation marks are the signs for strings, so any string needs to be enclosed in quotation marks. So we can copy this, copy that, and then we can print. And you see it's actually kept that. On older versions of Python, it will let you do this, but and it will just remove the zero from the front you can set integers to stuff with zeros but it'll just remove the zero on and it won't do an error but on later versions of python like this one it will give you an error right so thank you for watching this tech and trains channel video in the next video i'll be showing you how to use if statements but for now bye and thank you for watching